When Jonathan was born, of course, we thought he was the most beautiful baby in the world. We decided we was gonna enter him into a contest, a baby contest. Jonathan was very suited for that because most of the babies were crying, screaming. Jonathan rarely cried ever and was just alert and he won every baby contest he was ever in. He would blow kisses, things like that. And judges liked that. Jonathan did some modeling for Jell-O, Macy's department store. So um, I guess that was his beginning television career. Poker is effectively my life. Today, there it is. Poker players are the smartest on the field. Compassion is really a bad trait. It's coming down to the last card. He has taken the title. What a deserving champion. I have poker to thank. The game in itself has given me so many opportunities. When I think of Jonathan Little, I don't just think of him as a two-time WPT champion. We have a new chip leader. As a WPT player of the year. Jonathan Little has taken command again. I think of Jonathan Little as the hardest working poker player in the poker world. John's a legend of the game. I mean, his, his tournament results speak for themselves. He works so, so, so hard um, on promoting the game, writing books, and then he's playing all the time. Jonathan's on his way to becoming a poker legend for a new generation. Jonathan Little is like a professor. He does a great job of relating some of the complexities of poker to new players or beginner players that really are trying to get an understanding of the game. And so he's capturing all the trends in poker and showing the world this is what they're doing right now. Hello, everyone. We are about to start the main event of EPT Malta. I am here in Prague. It's important that there's people like Jonathan that are there to kind of pass down that information. I think one of the best things that's happened to the game is Jonathan Little. He's a visionary um, and, and a very hardworking one. Any player will tell you that to be a master at poker, you must first become a student of the game. Jonathan Little's journey from student to master started long before he held his first deck of cards. Pensacola, Florida. I guess everyone knows it's located in Northwest Florida. And I guess you'd say Jonathan grew up in a typical American household. My mother was a school teacher. She taught kindergarten and third grade. My dad was a lineman working for the power company. He fixed power lines. I recognize Jonathan was very smart early on. He was always wanting to learn, always interested in books. He would read every night, even as a small child. He would go get those books off the shelf and turn through each page, and we thought that was precious. We didn't realize just how smart he was. My dad would always introduce me to various games. Jonathan loved chess, and he picked up on it very quickly, but he just wasn't quite as good as his dad. I said to Larry, you, you need to let him win sometimes, and Larry's like, I'm not gonna let him win because I want him to be great at it. I learned really quickly as a kid that I did not like losing. So I got a few chess books. I studied all those. Pretty soon Jonathan had gotten better at the game than his father was. That little strategic mind of his was already growing into something wonderful as far as we thought. I found Magic the Gathering in sixth grade. There was this class called Gifted Studies for smart kids. Um, one class per day, you would go in there and essentially either goof off or do some huge project. And uh, on one of the goof off days, we played Magic and I loved it. In Magic, everyone brings their own deck of cards and there are thousands and thousands of cards that you can choose from. That's a lot of fun because you're presented with a new puzzle to figure out. I remember spending like 30 bucks on these Magic books, which was a lot of money for a kid because I wanted to get good at it. I did not like losing. <laughs> We told Jonathan, you know, Jonathan, you're your own worst enemy because he'd want to beat himself up if he wasn't perfect. And so Jonathan went to some regional tournaments uh, in New Orleans and in Orlando and actually became a really high-ranked player. I was playing a magic tournament. One of the players said, why don't we play a poker tournament? And everyone put up 10 10-cent 10 value cards, so everyone buys in for a dollar, effectively. And 
We played until someone had all the chips. And of course, the guy who proposed the game won. And he actually won most of the time we played. And I quickly realized that he is better than us. And so I decided to start studying poker. I bought all the poker books on the market, studied them, and started applying myself. I discovered online poker at about the same time that I got into the game, and I knew that I wanted to play. I had to get my first $50 in somehow, and I did not have a credit card when I was 18. And so I asked my dad to use his credit card to put 50 bucks online. I said, you want to put your money in there. I'm not putting my money on life and deal for you to play poker. I thought, you know, this is a gimmick. I, I, this is not legit, you know? My parents were very anti-gambling as a kid, probably because they went to Biloxi a time or two and lost 100 bucks and didn't enjoy that experience. And so we had kind of a bad taste in our mouth about the big G word, gambling. But Jonathan was determined to play online poker and eventually acquired his own credit line to start playing. I eventually deposited 50 bucks online and started very small. I had read that there's a thing about, called bankroll management and you don't want to go broke. You could read stories about all these guys uh, making it sound glamorous to go broke and that didn't sound so glamorous to me. My goal was just to see my account go up. He spent a lot of time grinding at, at his desk uh, playing poker online. So I ran it up to about $35,000 rather quickly. Though Jonathan obsessed over poker, he still managed to keep up with his schoolwork. Jonathan did very well in school. We were very, very happy and proud for him. And, uh, he was in National Honor Society and who's who on, on high school students. And he got the Florida Merit Scholarship to attend college. We were glad he decided to stay at the University of West Florida, which was home. But the jump from high school to college did not go as smoothly as Jonathan had hoped. With college, I was initially studying engineering and I was doing poorly because I was playing a lot of poker and not studying. And I just did not necessarily enjoy learning calculus or whatever. I wanted to be playing poker all the time. That's what I love and that's what I enjoy doing. I noticed he started collecting books and these books were all poker books. He was studying poker like he was getting a degree in a way with poker. I had to take a summer school class because to keep your scholarship, you had to go during the summer. And I went in, we had our first class. Second class, we go in, they gave us a pop quiz. I got a zero. And I realized I didn't want to be there anymore. That was very devastating for me as an educator for him to quit school. And I'm like, oh no, full scholarship. And he's going to quit. Sure enough, he did. He said, mom, poker is too profitable. To the dismay of his parents, Jonathan Little dropped out of college to focus full time on playing online poker. Jonathan, playing poker was more than an obsession. It was a path to a lucrative future. I treated my poker play as just seeing my account balance go up. That was the goal. And if you take the money out, your account balance goes down, and that's bad. He already knew what he wanted his future to look like. He already knew he was striving to be successful at this. Jonathan also found that a strong poker community thrived online. <laughs> I was playing online sit and goes, my normal game, and in this game there maybe were 20 or 30 players who played a lot, kind of like I was doing. And you see their names, you recognize their name. And one time this guy named Bluff for Rent was berating someone in the chat box because they probably put a bad beat on him or something. That's a common thing you see online. And I knew Bluff for Rent was a good player, and I also knew that you don't want to berate the bad player because you want them to play. Bluff for Rent turned out to be Shannon Shore, another young online grinder from Alabama. I started off playing $5 home games like in uh, dorms in my college apartment, and I think I lost around like $3,000, which was a decent amount, of, <laughs> decent amount for a college student. John was playing a lot of the same games that I was, and so I knew he kind of must be winning because he was just continually all day, every day playing in these games, so I thought it must be going well for him and we just started chat up, and uh, so it began. He sort of taught me a lot of optimal strategy. Poker's just like one big formula, so you sort of need to know which hands to play from which position, so I was making mistakes by playing the wrong hands from, from wrong positions. I don't know if I helped him or not. <laughs> I, I assume we talked a lot about poker together. We talked about the game a lot, and I learned a lot from him. I guess he thinks he learned a lot from me, and we're both still here. Soon, the two young men decided to take their poker game from the World Wide Web.
to live poker tables. Shannon had just taken fourth in the Aussie Millions for a bunch of money. He was doing great, and he was gonna go to Austria for this tournament. I decided to go to Austria too. We went out there, we hung out, we met a bunch of people, and that was my first overseas trip. It was a ton of fun, and we made a lasting friendship. But Jonathan found that winning at online poker does not translate to success at live poker. The first year of live poker that I played, I did really, really bad. I beat my head against the wall for about six or eight months. And look at Jonathan. Gotta love those mirrored glasses too, huh? That's something out of a bad 70s cop movie. And so when I transitioned to live poker, I was kind of paranoid about giving away tells because you'd watch the World Poker Tour and you'd hear Mike Sexton point out these guys' tells that are horrifically obvious once you know the cards they have and you correlate it. And I sure didn't want that to happen to me. So I wore sunglasses, I wore a hoodie. When Jonathan plays, he becomes a different person. It's kind of unusual for us because he doesn't act that way at home. Jonathan hid behind his facade and kept grinding at the tables. His effort finally paid off when he made the final table of the 2007 Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure. Jonathan calls us on the phone and we had just got on our cruise ship because we actually do enjoy cruises. And he said, uh, I'm gonna be at the final table at this tournament. And we're like, oh good, well go ahead, you have some fun. And so that's all he said and we went on our cruise. That's a huge pot there, over four million in that pot. I'm all in. And the small blind, he's got ace queen, he's gonna put it all in. Wow. On the river. When we came back, Jonathan said, well, this is how much money I won. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, the final table, that's just the last people, and everybody gets in the money. And we're like, and we missed it. We had never missed a single thing Jonathan ever did. If he was in a play, we were there. If he was running a race, we were there. Though Jonathan took a bad beat on the river, he still finished fifth just over $300,000. His parents were pleasantly surprised. Jonathan won this cruise to play poker. It was called a poker cruise. Going to the trip, I decided to take my parents. It seemed like a good idea. Um, they would allow, allow me to bring myself and a guest, but I paid for my parents to go. And my parents had no clue how to play poker there, but they'd had a poker school, I guess, there, where they taught them the basics, and they fell in love with the game. That was my and Rita's first introduction to poker. Jonathan started teaching us, I would say, after the um, cruise. He was always willing and available for us to have home games and play with his cousins and aunts and uncles, and uh, so we did that. And he really kind of educated all of us. Larry and Rita Little promised to never miss another one of Jonathan's final tables. In return, Jonathan gave his parents insight into his poker life. Jonathan Little was an online poker prodigy, and he found moderate success at live poker. He would finally get his big breakthrough at the 2007 World Poker Tour's Mirage Poker Showdown. And welcome to the Mirage Poker Showdown. So I was debating if I should even show up because eight big blinds is not very many chips. The odds of me winning are very low. But I decided to go play the tournament, and I showed up to the tournament, and then I won every hand, and I ended up making the final table. Second time within a year to make a World Poker Tour final table, but it's a whole different story to become a champion. True to their words, Larry and Rita Little were not going to miss another one of their son's final tables. When we got there, there were reserve seats for us right on the front row, and we realized, oh my goodness, this is actually a huge production. Why do you think they're taping it? And John says, well, I'm going to be on television. We were surprised, confused, but oh so happy. I mean, you'll find that in every tournament, there's usually one or two guys who just get hit by the deck. And if they don't screw it up in some way, they're probably going to do really well. And, and that was me that day. Jonathan Little, still very poised, not even getting up from his seat. I don't think I did anything too amazing and the amazing things I tried to do didn't work too well. Right now, here's the flop. Oh! Oh, oh my golly! 
the crowd roar. Jonathan Riddle shows no emotion whatsoever. And it comes to turn card, Mike. Another deuce! Another deuce. That's going to do it. Oh! Jonathan Riddle has done it. On the last two consecutive hands. Jonathan, smile, son. It's over. <laughs> You've won the 1.1 million. Take your million bucks home. Be happy. He did smile at the end, and he just looked up at us, and we hugged, and I said, you won. You did this. You did what you wanted to do. You're making your dreams come true. Here's to the champion of the Mirage Poker Showdown, Jonathan Little. Winning any major tournament is a huge momentum builder. If they just hand you a million dollars, all of a sudden, you're rich, and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Jonathan's career began its meteoric rise, and over the next few years, he would become one of the most successful online and live poker players. But Jonathan would find his most successful play back where it all began, at the Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure. Well, every year, you go to the Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure in January. That's what everyone does, because it's a big poker festival. I was just hanging out in the poker tournament area, and one of my friends, he was there with his girlfriend, three other guys and their girlfriends. So as I was playing, this girl walks up behind me, and usually when you see a girl behind you at a poker table, you know she's with a guy at the table. But she's clearly not with them, she's not with me, so what is she doing here? And the guy turns around and says, what are you doing here? And at that point, I'm totally mortified. My face turns red and I go, oh, I'm sorry, and I start to leave. And he goes, no, 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 it's okay, you can stay. <laughs> and it was, it was John. I talked to her a bit, and she was just there for vacation. It was her last day of vacation. He said, you're not here with a guy? And I, I go, oh, no, 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 it's just, just a girl's trip. And then he says, why aren't you married? <laughs> I have no idea why he asked that. Um, and I didn't have a good answer. Then he asked if we, I wanted to get a bite to eat and keep talking. We talked for a good, maybe another hour and a half or so there, and then he walked me out to a cab, and that was it. Afterwards, she went home. I messaged her on Facebook because I really liked her. I thought she was cool. And we would just email pages to each other about our families and what we did and who we were. And then that turned into long phone calls. He notified us one day that he met a girl. That's what he said, I met a girl. And I'm, we're like, oh, really? OK. Where'd you meet her? Oh, I met her at the casino in the Bahamas. And we're like, uh-oh. He came back and said, Dad, I met this young lady from New York City. I said, okay, I didn't really know what to think about that. The odds of me meeting Amy and talking to Amy and all of that were incredibly low. I ran hot, sometimes you're lucky. He was invited to play a charity poker tournament in New York a few weeks later, and so he said he was coming to New York, would I, would I want to meet up? And I, I, I said yes. She invited me to stay with her while I was there for a few days, and so I went over there and I moved in and I have yet to move out. To the delight of Jonathan and Amy's parents and his best man, Shannon Shore, they were married in a beautiful New York ceremony. But moving from Las Vegas to New York would have a huge effect on Jonathan's poker game. And that was a big transition because instead of going to Bellagio every day to play cash games, I did not have anything to do. So when I first moved in, we bought a video game system, and I sat there and played video games all day for about six months. Then I realized that was not a very good use of my time. Married and living in New York City gave Jonathan Little time to figure out what he was going to do next with his poker career. He found he was ready to share the knowledge he had gained at the poker tables with other aspiring players. That's when I started writing books, and really working on helping other poker players who want to improve. The title of my first book was Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. And what was really exciting about it was that he had written so much that it had to get split into multiple volumes. He just had so much to say. And then he wrote another book and another book. He became very successful as a teacher. It feels a lot better to help people than it does to necessarily help yourself. Jonathan's best pupils may be the two people who watched him grow to be the man he is. Two of my best students are my parents. I mean, my dad's actually had a pretty good amount of cashes. My dad went from not wanting to lose $100 in Biloxi gambling to now winning $50,000 playing live poker tournaments. I have access to, uh, as far as I'm concerned, one of the top poker coaches in the world, and it's, it's, it's great to have Jonathan there to help me better my game. 
Maybe the greatest moment of Jonathan Little's career happened at the 2016 World Series of Poker. Jonathan invited his parents to join him in the first ever tag team tournament. On, on fire. Built up a little bit of a stack and then handed it off to his mom and his dad. And the team known as Little, Little, Little finished in ninth place of 863 teams. We were very lucky. Uh, our side was stacked because we had the greatest teacher in the world. So that was my first time I was ever at the final table. So he kind of made my dreams come true in a way. He's, he's got such a great mind for the game and the fact that he shares that with, with everybody is, is pretty astonishing. John's gained a ton of respect. Uh, Poker's one of those things where we're all competing against each other, so nobody ever really wants to give anybody too much credit. <laughs> you know, it's funny because, you know, he, he's selling the books and he's helping people and he's talking to people and he's, you know, exchanging information with them online. And then, but he's playing poker too. Like, he's playing a ton of events and you see him out there at the tables and he's uh, just like an everyday guy. It's awesome whenever I see John getting recognition for his work or even just someone saying, hey, you're John Little and shaking his hand. I know he's amazing, I just see what he does, and I know he's amazing, so I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, but to know that other people see that is really, he works a lot, he works very, very hard, and so to see other people respecting what he does is, um, is really just wonderful.